she's back hi friends welcome back to my channel i decided to make a new video i am standing for the first time in a while but that means that the floor is very creaky and the camera's swaying so i'm not gonna do what i just did as much Today, my friends, I'm going to show you seven sweeping epic fantasies that you have never heard of. I've done a few of these videos now where I'm showing off fantasy and more recently science fiction books that you guys have never heard of. And it makes me so happy because I always get comments that are like, I went into this thinking I was gonna know every book and I actually knew none of them. And that makes me happy, I don't know why. I love to try new things. There's absolutely nothing wrong with just reading the popular books, but I, I like to diversify, I like to branch out, I like to read books I've never heard of before. So I have selected seven fantasy books or seven fantasy series to talk to you guys about, and I decided to go with the theme of sweeping epics. So if you are a fan of traditional fantasy with a lot of battles and politics and world building and scheming and, and you know, things like that, a lot of familiar elements, but with also a lot of magic, fantastical things, I think you are going to enjoy the books that I have to show you today. And you're gonna be like, why have I not read these sooner? So let's just jump into it. I'm Philip DeFranco. The first series I have to show you guys is one that I'm truly astonished is not more popular. There are a couple of reasons I can think of as to why it is not more popular, uh, which I'll get to as soon as I show it to you. I haven't yet figured out really how I'm gonna hold the microphone and also show you books. So we're just gonna put these over here and see what happens. Yes, the first series I wanna talk to you guys about is the Moonfall series by James Rollins, the first book being The Starless Crown. If you're like, I've heard of James Rollins, what? He is a thriller author, primarily. He doesn't write a lot of fantasy. This is not his first fantasy, but he really like, really doesn't write fantasy. So I feel like people, I don't know. I feel like people either don't know who James Rollins is, so they don't trust that this is gonna be a good series, or they know who James Rollins is and they're like, why would I read a fantasy by a thriller author? But I really, really like this series. It's not finished yet. There are two books. There's The Starless Crown and The Cradle of Ice. <laughs> I didn't check when the third book is coming out. I'm sorry. This is a series for fans of true, big, epic adventures. If you love lots of point of view characters, if you love different backgrounds of those characters, as in they're not all soldiers, they're not all coming from the same place, they're coming together with, with varying backgrounds. And if you like found family, people being forced to go on a quest, this is the one. I would be even bold enough to say that if you're a fan of Robert Jordan or Brandon Sanderson, you should be reading The Starless Crown. We have a fairly classic setup here. We have a gifted student who foretells the apocalypse by accident and she's sentenced to death for it. And through her perspective, we do get a little bit of dark academia, if you're a fan of dark academia. But as she flees this sentence, she teams up with a drunken prince who is the twin brother of the, the prince that's important. So he's looking for his own destiny. We have a soldier just riddled with PTSD trying to get back home wielding a forbidden weapon and we have a thief prisoner who has escaped with knowledge and these four characters are teaming up to solve puzzles deal with ancient artifacts do all kinds of fun magic-y mystery stuff to save the world and let me show you the best part this series is full of magical creatures that are quite unique and there's lots of illustrations throughout the book showing them off i'm a big fan of these guys let me find my favorite ones though the mirror bats oh we got these big bat boys not those bat boys. Okay, calm down. Actual bat boys who are obviously gonna be some pretty sick animal companions throughout the story. I read the Nightfall series shortly after reading the Covenant of Steel series by Anthony Ryan, and I would compare a lot of elements to them. So again, if you are a fan of Anthony Ryan, Ari Salvatore, uh, Michael Moorcock, Brandon Sanderson, Robert Jordan, you know, very classic epics like that, but with twists and unique magic systems and unique creatures, I recommend the Moonfall series. Next up, I'm not sure if this is a series or not. I didn't do the research, but I have another book for you. Wow, great introduction. And it has black sprayed edges. This is The Queen's Assassin by James Barkley. It's not a series, it's a standalone. It literally says that inside, I'm sorry. This is a story of forbidden magic. It's sort of a chosen one story, but mostly it's like surprise hidden powers. <laughs> Our main character, Nida, 
which is the Finnish word for fuck. The main character, Nida, has healing magic, but magic is very, very, very not okay. Not allowed at all in this world. You know, it's one of those things. But she works as a field medic for the army where she pretends she doesn't have healing magic and that she's just really, really good at her job. And people believe it. <laughs> she's content being elbow deep in blood and guts, healing people, making things better, hiding her secrets. But one day she is pulled from the battlefields and taken out of her comfort zone to the courts of the queen for various nefarious political purposes. I know, I know I said sweeping epics, and normally you would think that a, a, a sweeping epic would have to be a long series, and this is a standalone, but I really felt while reading it that it, it was very epic in scale for being only one book. The Queen's Assassin is a really fun story of royal conspiracy, as well as sort of like, ooh, my books are falling over, as well as like female empowerment, female rage. And what I really enjoyed about this one is we get to see a grittier side of healing magic. I feel like in a lot of books, healing magic, medicine magic is always a very delicate, beloved, like, ooh, we're healing you with the wind so, <laughs> sort of vibe. But this is very much like shoving her hands inside wounds and you know, healing them that way. And, and I liked that. I found it actually very unique and not putting a lot of sugar coating on medicine. Like she is a field medic for a lot of this book and it's pretty gross and gruesome and I like it. So if you're looking for just one book to read, you're not really on board for an entire big series, The Queen's Assassin by James Barkley is the one for you. Unless of course you're looking for another epic standalone novel, in which case you should go for The Counselor by E.J. Beaton. Not that this means anything to you, but E.J. Beaton has the same agent as John Gwynn. So there, she has good taste. Anyways, this is another one where I actually, I, I am surprised it didn't take off and I feel that marketing kind of let it down. In a way, this is a romanticy. It's a more highbrow romanticy, no offense to the romanticy girlies out there, but it, it's kind of a romanticy. <laughs> this is the story of Lisa and Pryor, who is the royal scholar. She's a librarian essentially, and she's the queen's best friend. But when the queen unfortunately mysteriously dies, Lysand is named the counselor, essentially the person in charge of choosing the next monarch. That's how this world works. So publicly she has to remain very impartial and stoic, and she's very unprepared for this. But privately she is doing a little murder mystery. Obviously this has tons of political scheming in it. It also has cool, unique magic system. It has a huge cast of characters in a good way. We have all of the contenders for the throne coming together and Lee Sand has to interact with all of them and it is very entertaining. We have a morally gray MC named Luca Fontaine, sometimes rival, sometimes ally. Uh, but we also have bisexual rep, which is cool. Lee Sand is bisexual. And there's a lot of magical drug use. So I guess trigger warning for drug use, but also I think it's really cool and interesting to see that explored in a book like this because uh, uh, no spoilers, but Lee Sand deals with a drug addiction. <laughs> I remember I picked this up because the cover was interesting to me and because it's got a, literally a quill and a griffin on the front. And I, I don't know. I was interested in that, but I don't think that this cover is doing this book too many favors. I prefer this over a typical romanticy cover, but I, I don't know. I feel like marketing just really let this down. It's published by Daw, who is not known for their marketing abilities. No offense to Daw. I think this could have blown up. I think this book is really beautifully written. It has really unique and interesting characters, but it also has a lot of those tropey buzzwords that people love. So I'm surprised that we don't see more of this book around and I highly encourage you to check it out and then talk to me about it because I love this book. The fourth set of books I have for you is a completed trilogy. You're welcome. I know you've been waiting. And it's one where ah, I get, I get it, why it's not more popular. And I want it to be because I really like it. But some people say it's a little problematic. So we can unpack that a bit. But I want you to make your own decisions. You know, it's, I don't, I think it's the Ascendant series, I think is what it's called. But the first one is The Tiger's Daughter by K. Arsenal Rivera. I'm gonna put the other two down because it's hard to hold everything. This series was one of the first series I read when I was getting back into books a couple of years ago. I mentioned in a much older video that 
I sort of had like a five or six year hiatus from reading where I just thought I didn't like books anymore. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> and my husband, we've been together for 10 years, didn't even know I liked books until like three years ago. So this truly is the book that got me out of my five year reading slump and I will forever be grateful to it. This is a sapphic Asian inspired fantasy series about two girls who grow up as best friends but fall in love as they get older. And it's about the prophecy and destiny that surround their lives. Oshizuka and Shefali are from two opposing cultures but their mothers are best friends. So they were raised on and off together. Shizuka or Oshizuka is from a very, I would I would imagine Japanese inspired culture and Shefali is from a more Mongolian inspired culture. And both of them know they are growing up with great purpose and destiny and each have sort of inherent magical abilities related to their cultures. You'll have to read it to really understand what I'm talking about. They're both total badasses from the time they're like four years old. One of the things people do not like about this series that I didn't have a problem with is that it is written in an epistolary format. So it is written as a letter from Shafali to Shizuka, and it's sort of the retelling of their lives. Kind of an odd letter to write, but I get it. A demonic plague has been spreading over the lands and it is Oshizuka's destiny to eradicate this. And Shafali is sort of her friend slash girlfriend who's gonna follow her to the ends of the earth. And their goal from the start is to save the world and become legendary. One of the things that I really like about this series is that it feels like a very masculine setup. I don't know how to explain what I mean. Usually when I see characters that as children, you know, are best friends as children and they wanna grow up to be heroes and legends, it's usually boys that we are talking about, but it suits these characters so well. And it's a really beautiful, epic, badass story. I absolutely adore the writing style. I think the prose is gorgeous. The characters are super fun. The culture is well familiar and, and very clearly inspired by specific real world things, I think are unique and fun as well. One of the things, unfortunately, that people are not a fan of with this series, and I, I, don't, I don't have much to say about this in this video. Uh, the author is Latina, not Asian, and she has openly stated that she's very inspired by anime and manga for the world building. So a lot of people don't think that she created this world in the most respectful way to real world cultures. I will leave that up to you to decide. I'm not an expert on any of the cultures pulled from for this, so it's, I, it's not for me to say if it was respectful or not. I think that the story and the, especially the love story in this is really is really gorgeous. So I do recommend this series. Also, it's blurred by V.E. Schwab, okay? She didn't have a problem with it. And the cover is done by Jamie Jones, who's one of my favorite cover artists. So that's like another reason why I love this series. Okay. For epic fantasy series number five, we're gonna go grim dark because I know you're waiting for something dork. Dork. The last three have been very romantic. So next we're gonna go with Penny Blade by J.L. Warad and the sequel, The Keep Within. Guys, this series is so much fun. It is grim dark, so there's a lot of grim darkness to it. <laughs> But I would say that the character, the main character, oh my gosh, she makes this just the most incredibly fun, hilarious, gross story ever. This is a story of Kira, who is a highborn elf exiled from her people because she fell in love with a lowborn servant. She is working as a sword wielding, rapier wielding mercenary, and she's filthy, foul, hilarious, bisexual as heck. But when she's betrayed by her fellow penny blades, she's forced to track down a demon and go on a demon hunt to save the world. Honestly, the quotes on the back, which are from, the first one is from RJ Barker. He says, this is a violent and wildly imaginative riot of a book. Could not agree more. And Anna Smith Spark says, filthy, furious, wonderful. That is true. One of the major themes in Penny Blade is classism. And I think it's really expertly examined in this book in a way that is like fun and interesting, but very poignant. So if you are looking for something fun in line with Joe Abercrombie, but maybe a little less depressing, I would, I would go for this. I cannot express to you how fun this series is. Go read it. Did I talk about that series in my last fantasy books you haven't heard of video? I might have. I'm just realizing that now. I might that might be a double up, but I, it just means I love it, you know. Anyways, we're on the second last one. I'm trying to pick it up from the table behind me. And this is another series. It's not finished yet. The first two books are out. Uh, it's going to be a trilogy, I believe. This is a series that I think 
Saga Press thought would do really well. Like they, they packaged it in a way that says, this is gonna be popular. And it just unfortunately was not. And I don't really know why. Again, it seems like something that should be big, but I've never seen anyone talk about it. And of course I'm talking about the Five Queendoms series by G.R. McAllister or Greer McAllister. I'm gonna put one of them down. See, doesn't this look like something that if you saw on the shelf, you'd be like, that's gotta be super popular. But then for whatever reason, it's blurbed by Kate Quinn. <laughs> world War II historical fiction author, Kate Quinn. This is set in a world where girls have stopped being born. It is called the drought of girls. This drought sets off a cascade of political difficulties. <laughs> Countries and nations are turning on one another. It is chaos. The story itself has, I believe, five POV characters. I'm just gonna read them for you from the blurb because it's a lot, but we follow a warrior queen who must rise from the childbirth bed to fight for her life and her throne, a healer in hiding, frantic to protect the secret of her daughter's explosive power, a queen whose desperation to retain control leads her to risk using the darkest magic, a near immortal sorcerer powerful enough to remake the world for her own ends, and the generation of last born girls, the ones born just before the drought, who must bear the hopes and traditions of their nations if the queendoms are to survive. At the top of the the inside flap, it states that this is an epic fantasy perfect for fans of Naomi Novik's Spinning Silver and Madeline Miller's Circe. And I agree with that, but I, I actually think it's bigger than those. To me, Spinning Silver and Circe are, are great examples, but they are very small books. They are not sweeping epics in my opinion. This series is, is much broader than those books. And I wish that they were comparing it to something else. I would compare this almost more to Rebecca Roanhorse's Black Sun series. I don't remember the name of the series, but the Black Sun book. I would even compare this to like Peter V. Brett, Desert Prince, Tasha Surrey, maybe. I would compare it to things like that. I just really think Saga Press did not do this series justice for what it is. Part of Kate Quinn's quote on the back says that this book contains enough swashbuckling female swordplay to delight Wonder Woman's entire Isle of Amazons. And my gosh, do I feel like that quote is extremely belittling. <laughs> I get it, we get it. it girl power, go girls, go ladies. But can we please compare epic fantasies written by women to epic fantasies written by men? It's not a different genre. Anyways, that's that's a whole other thing. Maybe we'll talk about it at another point. Maybe I'm just projecting because I'm upset. The point is, I think that the Five Queendom series is really great and it has been absolutely let down by marketing. <laughs> also, Greer McAllister is a wonderful person. She's very interactive on social media. So if you do read these, like tag her and stuff and she'll probably interact with you and be very happy. And we are on the final seventh sweeping epic fantasy that you have never heard of. I do wonder if you have heard of these. I feel like for a moment they were quite popular or or were they were going to be quite popular and then they just faded back into obscurity. Not really sure. But I present to you The God King Chronicles by Mike Brooks. I have the UK covers. I special ordered them because I like them better than the US covers. See, why am I doing this? I can't hold any books. But if you are part of my US Canada audience, you might've seen them in the store looking like this. It's up to you what you think looks better, but I, I personally very much like the UK covers. I think that this series is absolutely ripe for a renaissance because we've got war dragons and you love war dragons. Not only that, but we have demons. I feel like the sub theme for this video could be demons because I think a lot of these, yeah, a lot of these were demon themed as well. But The Black Coast, the first book in the God King Chronicles, is really an introduction, a setup to this huge completed trilogy that, uh, it's beautiful. In The Black Coast, we have raiders on the horizon, driven from their own lands by a demonic warlord, coming into the lands of our main characters, who are also under threat from this demonic warlord. It has a trope that I really like, which is a small story at the center of a much larger one. The characters of this book are the residents of the Black Keep, sort of a, a society, a small place, sort of caught in the crossfire between these raiders coming in and the country they're invading, attacking back, and like the, the people are just caught in the middle. This is nonstop action, absolutely bloody epic. War is brewing politics are politicking people are just freaking out trying to figure out how to oppose this warlord and his prophecy of the end of the world as i said this is a completed trilogy 
So if you're one of those people that doesn't buy books until the series is complete, you can buy this one. And that is it. That was seven sweeping epic fantasy series that you have never heard of. And that is a promise. Let me know in the comments below if you actually have heard of or read any of these. I do like to know. But also, please let me know if these are new to you. If any of these are new to you. If you plan on reading any of them. I want to know that as well because I just want more people to be reading more different books. I talked about this a bunch, obviously, when I was talking about Scorpica, specifically the Five Queendom series. But I really think that book marketing and book publishing ugh, is messy right now and in recent history. A lot of books just get missed because they don't get the right marketing and there's so many new specific targeted ways to market a book to your audience that some publishers just are not caught up yet. Some authors unfortunately are also not caught up yet. I, I think it's really important for authors to be using social media on their own to market their books and some just are not doing that. It's a changing market. It's a changing world and we need to adapt to it. And I really implore you to read more than just Brandon Sanderson <laughs> and Sarah J Maas, the only two authors out there. Please read at least one of the books I recommended today. If I had to recommend one series above all else, it would be the first one I talked about, Moonfall, The Starless Crown. Oh, I feel like th that should be a huge series and I am shocked that it's not. But obviously I recommend all seven series I talked about today. Before I go, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell icon so you know when I upload new videos, I upload two days a week. I love you guys, goodbye.